Have you ever been curious about the mysteries that exist beneath the surface of the planet, tucked away in the unexplored lands of old caves? Imagine a place where time has stood still, a refuge below where people have not been allowed to enter for ages. However, every cave possesses a significant historical background. Keeping this in mind, recently scientists discovered a cave that had been sealed for millions of years that may make people wonder what else might be kept hidden inside a cave that long. It's important to remember that this cave is not the only place where ancient mysteries can be found, as life often appears in the most unexpected places. So without wasting our time, let's dive into these shocking discoveries found in the caves of the Earth. An Axe Murderer In 1916, Joseph Henry Lovelace found himself in a far from virtuous situation. He was seized and detained on the grounds that he may have viciously axed his wife Agnes to death. But Lovelace showed his ingenuity by stowing a tiny saw blade within his shoe, which enabled him to carry out a risky jailbreak and essentially disappear without a trace. His disappearance remained a mystery until 1979 when a family in Buffalo Cave, Idaho made an unexpected discovery that provided light on his fate. The family came across a gruesome sight, a decapitated torso encased in a Hessian bag. Twelve years later, in 1991, a hand that matched the other hand was found. This discovery sparked a thorough search that eventually turned up more remains, including legs and an arm. The pieces of this complex puzzle started to come together as time went on. It was decided to run a DNA study on the body after a grueling 18-year period. Surprisingly, the test proved that Loveless himself was the rightful owner of the remains. His own grandson, who was getting close to 90, contributed his DNA, firmly establishing the identity and finally putting an end to the enigma. Nonetheless, the precise circumstances of Loveless's demise remain shrouded in uncertainty. According to some interpretations, Loveless may have been chased by Agnes's family, who may have carried out their own brand of justice out of a desire for vengeance. Despite this ambiguity, the continued study of Earth's caverns is essential to improving our understanding of both the complex geological characteristics and the history of our planet. Israel's Cave of Horror the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls was not instantaneous like that of a cache of antiquities. They are actually made up of a number of scroll pieces that have been discovered over time. Since the 1940s, archaeologists have kept finding fresh pieces, and as recently as 2021, more bits have been found. A startling discovery was made in a cave in Israel known as the Cave of Horror because of a terrible historical incident that occurred there in the 1960s when 40 Jews were discovered dead by Roman troops from the 2nd century. Researchers discovered the mummified remains of a little girl who lived about 6,000 years ago when they returned to the cave in 2021. They also found more Dead Sea Scrolls there. Even though the name of God is written in Hebrew on these contemporary scroll pieces, the writing is in Greek. Evidently, these scrolls belong to Jewish rebels, who in the 2nd century fled persecution after their futile attempt to overthrow Roman rule. The recently discovered pieces comprise verses from the books of Zechariah and Nahum, which are both included in a collection known as the Book of the Twelve Minor Prophets. This discovery is like putting a piece of an old puzzle together. That, however, is not the whole amount of the information. In addition to the scrolls, other artifacts discovered included rare coins from the time of the Jewish uprising and an astonishingly well-preserved basket that was thought to be 10,500 years old. Accessing the cave is no straightforward task, situated around 260 feet beneath a clifftop. They were reached by specialized repelling teams. The purpose of this operation was to protect the caverns from robbers who could be looking for these priceless artifacts. From the famous Dead Sea Scrolls to these more recent discoveries, the Judean desert has been a rich source of historical artifacts. Uncovering the mysteries of the past one piece of a scroll at a time, it resembles an actual archaeological exploration. Crystallized Human Sacrifice A historical location called Actun Tunakil Muknal, commonly known as the Cave of the Crystal Sepulchre, is located in Belize. There are disturbing truths and a treasure trove of Mayan artifacts hidden deep within. Due to its use as a location for ritualistic human sacrifices, this cave has importance beyond the ordinary. You'll come across skeletons while investigating. Some of them are set upon altars and covered in ceremonial adornments and accessories. The skeletal remains are from people of all ages, including infants and adults, and some have oddly shaped skulls. The focus is drawn to the crystal maiden's crystal encrusted remains nevertheless. This poor 17-year-old kid, who was initially misclassified as a woman, had a brutally awful end, with all of his bones completely covered in calcium crystals, giving him an uncannily deformed appearance. The cave's origins trace back to approximately 250 AD to 909 AD, when the ancient Maya believed it to be a focal point for deities overseeing agriculture and rain. 
Offerings to placate these gods included human sacrifices. Accessing the cave still presents a difficult obstacle, even though human sacrifice is a thing of the past. Only two tour companies are permitted to take guests to this national monument, and swimming past its entrance is a physical requirement. Actun Tunakil Muknal may beckon to you if you're looking for a challenge that sends shivers down your spine and have the stamina to overcome it. But be ready for shiver-inducing sights and an unforgettable history lesson. Movile Cave, Romania. Finally, researchers have obtained entrance to a cave known as the Movil Cave, after it had been sealed off for an amazing 5.5 million years. Though it is in a dangerous environment, a dark chasm with poisonous air, a remarkable ecosystem exists there. The Movial Cave was found in 1986 while looking for a location for a nuclear power plant. Access has been controlled by the government. In the depths of this cave, a setting unlike any other on Earth is revealed. Its air is heavy in carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide and has less than half the amount of oxygen that is present in open air. The cave's unusual circumstances, which have fascinated researchers for years despite being completely dark and without sunshine. Biologists from the University of Cincinnati identified 48 species, including 33 that are exclusive to the Movile Cave, in a study that was conducted in 1996. Among its inhabitants are spiders, pseudoscorpions, woodlice, centipedes, leeches, snails, and more. Elongated limbs and antennae, which are essential adaptations for darkness, have allowed these cave dwellers to evolve the ability to navigate without sight or pigmentation. The earliest known land-based ecosystem dependent on chemosynthetic bacteria is represented by the Movil Cave, which is what really sets it different from other cave systems. In contrast to most ecosystems, which rely on photosynthesis, the bacteria in the cave obtain their energy and carbon from chemical reactions involving sulfide or ammonium oxidation. Though reminiscent of oceanic hydrothermal vent ecosystems, the Movial Cave lacks the symbiotic relationships between chemoautotrophic microbes and animals found in deep sea vent communities. Despite years of study, numerous mysteries persist, suggesting countless undiscovered inhabitants that could provide insights into evolutionary biology and the essence of life itself. This cave's enigmatic nature implies that we still have much to uncover about potential life forms both on Earth and within our solar system. If life can thrive in these harsh conditions, the possibilities for its existence elsewhere are intriguingly expansive. Extinct Bird In 1987, archaeologists from the Speleological Society of New Zealand made an extraordinary discovery. A claw from a moa bird, a species long extinct. Surprisingly, the claw's skeletal remains were not the only things that were discovered. Remains of muscles and tissue were also present. With eight different species, the moa birds were once a powerful presence in New Zealand. Others stood at towering heights of up to 12 feet and weighed as much as 500 pounds, while some were around the size of turkeys. The claw's age was determined by experts to be 3,300 years, establishing its status as a prehistoric native of New Zealand. When images of this flesh-coated claw circulated online, it caused a significant buzz on social media. A lot of people compared it to something from a science fiction movie, and even Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, entered the discussion on Twitter. He made a playful remark about how the claw looked like the hand of a rancor, a large reptile extraterrestrial creature from Return of the Jedi. Altamora Man, a startling find made in the depths of an Italian cave has shed light on the mystery surrounding our distant ancestors. Let me introduce Altamora Man, a skeleton that was discovered in the Lamalunga Caves in 1993 and is 170,000 years old. The oldest Neanderthal skeleton from which DNA could be reliably recovered. This amazing discovery enthralled experts. Because of the skull's fragile condition and its entrapment within stalactites and stalagmites, a complete investigation of the remains was complicated. Therefore, protecting the bones from disruption was a top priority. A breakthrough was made nonetheless when DNA was taken from the right shoulder blade of the Altamora man. These antiquated molecules, which could be 170,000 years old, could provide a hitherto unheard of view of Neanderthal existence. There is nothing typical about Altamora man. The skeleton has been hailed as the most complete non-human skeleton ever discovered by a paleontologist participating in the study. Almost every skeletal component from head to toe has been preserved, providing an unmatched window into history. Still, it was impossible to understand Altamora man's ancestry. It had the classic cranial and facial features of a Neanderthal, but it also had distinctive traits, such as prominent brow ridges that were not found in other Neanderthal specimens. The skeleton's continued partial encapsulation in rock makes investigation difficult and adds to the riddle. Surprisingly, radiocarbon dating produced a startling age estimate between 130,000 and 170,000 years. However, 
It's vital to keep in mind that these bones are not the earliest Neanderthal fossils in existence that we currently have in our possession. Translucent snails. A team of cavers and scientists made a groundbreaking discovery while exploring the mysterious depths of Croatia's Lukina Jama Trojama cave systems. They discovered a species of snail that had never been seen before in this amazing subterranean setting. These snails, however, were not the common garden kind. Instead, they had a captivating translucence. These iridescent snails, which belong to the genus Zospium, live in the deep crevices of the cave at an incredible depth of 3,200 feet below the surface. Surprisingly, these snails are completely blind and have adapted to their dark environment. It was no easy task to discover these unusual species. These daring explorers and biologists went on a subterranean journey that wasn't your typical spelunking excursion. It is among the top 20 deepest caves in the world, making it one of the globe. When the crew went deeper into the cave, their presumption that they would find uncommon species materialized because of the extraordinary depth that the habitat supplied. During their exploration, they collected several animal specimens when they came across a little snail that was unlike any other they had seen before. The newly discovered snail was given the name Zospium thalusum and had an amazing appearance. This snail was a tribute to the wonders of underground biodiversity, distinguished by a magnificent dome-shaped translucent shell that seemed fragile and delicately painted. These snails moved at a sluggish speed, gaining only a few millimeters or centimeters per week, frequently in circular patterns, like their terrestrial counterparts. They were able to graze at their own leisurely speed because they were safely enclosed in the cave. The team got confirmation that this newly discovered species was in fact a novel contribution to the scientific community after bringing it to the notice of taxonomist Alexander Weigand in Germany. The discovery of this extraordinary organism provided a window into a region that has remained mostly unexplored and is located deep within the boundaries of our planet. Oldest Bow Arrow The oldest bow and arrow technology ever discovered was discovered in a cave in Sri Lanka, and it was a stunning archaeological discovery. As the earliest known instance of archery in this particular geographical area, this amazing discovery dates back an astounding 48,000 years. The explorers came up with a variety of arrowheads while conducting excavation work within the Fahi and Lina cave, which is located in Sri Lanka's southwest. The discovery of finely wrought ornamental beads fashioned from sea snail shells and mineral ochre only added to its allure. This discovery is extremely important not just for South Asia, but also for the entire world, as it may be the earliest example of archery ever uncovered in all of Eurasia. This incident highlights the extraordinary technological prowess of these prehistoric societies. The ramifications of this discovery are intriguing. They indicate how resourceful our ancestors were by showing them to be proficient at adapting to various surroundings and using a variety of tools. Although they were discovered from a layer that was slightly more recent, roughly 14 years later, the projectile points, honed from animal bones, were positively dated to 48,000 years ago. The clever use of the trendy beads, which are cleverly attached to the arrows using a bow and arrow technique, is the twist that makes this story so engaging. If you like, try to picture the idea of using arrowheads made of decorative beads to hunt squirrels and rabbits. The discipline is shocked by this archaeological discovery, which refutes the idea that only Africa and Europe were the birthplaces of human creativity. It makes clear that places like South Asia should be taken seriously as fierce competitors in the field of imaginative ways. 175000-year-old Stalagmite Cave A stunning sight may be found within a cave in the southern part of France. Old stalagmite rings that have been burned by fire and have been there for an incredible 175,000 years. This underground room is a treasure mine of fascinating details that defy expectations, revealing a surprising side of our extinct ancestors, the Neanderthals. This archaeological wonder, located about 30 miles from Toulouse, France, was discovered by archaeologists after they came across a collection of over 400 carefully organized stalagmites that produced not one, but two circular shapes. At a startling 1,102 feet below the surface of the cave, this magnificent arrangement was discovered. As for the appearance of these formations, one assumed a pristine seven-foot-wide circle, while its counterpart sported an endearingly unconventional oval shape measuring roughly 15 feet in width and spanning 22 feet in length. But the real mystery was revealed by an unanticipated find, the clearly visible scorch traces produced by fire. Experts are still puzzled as to why these rings were treated to such scorching treatment, which raises a troubling question that will likely never have an answer. However, the true marvel of this revelation lies in its capacity to reshape our comprehension of Neanderthals. These ancient people, who were once thought to be primitive cave dwellers, are actually surprisingly skilled architects. Neanderthals are no longer thought to have been primitive survivalists. Instead, 
scientists now acknowledge them to have been skilled builders. This achievement wasn't made in a vacuum either. Instead, it came about through cooperation, social organization, and diligent collaboration, a tale that arouses vivid imaginations of discussions, strategic planning, and distributed tasks. Others controlled the movement and arrangement of items with a dexterity reminiscent of a primitive building job, while some Neanderthals carried torches to illuminate the activity. Even while their exact function is still unknown, it's possible that these buildings provided temporary refuge or had greater spiritual significance for the Neanderthals who built them. Clearly, a combination of ability, organizational prowess, and an instinctive sense of design were required to create these forms. These prehistoric creatures had a tremendous capacity for innovation, proving that they were more than just cave dwellers. They were genuine era architects. This discovery demonstrates the similarity between Neanderthals and early humans in terms of technical skill, hunting and fishing prowess, and even aesthetic expression. This aspect of our ancestors' legacy has been revealed in all its splendor, and the discovery of their architectural prowess is a monument to the depth of their abilities. In a startling turn of events, these discoveries shed light on the Neanderthals' ability to navigate their surroundings, express their creativity, and possibly even participate in religious meditation. Our ancestors' creative zeal and artistic skill are echoed across the chasm of time in a vivid portrayal of them painted by this newly discovered viewpoint. Chauvet Cave, France A fascinating story about the beginnings of human-canine partnership has been revealed by a collection of footprints that were found within a cave in France. These ancient footprints, which date to 26,000 years ago, raise the interesting possibility that human relationship with dogs may have existed before the last ice age. In light of this discovery, it may be necessary to significantly revise the conventional wisdom that suggests dog domestication occurred roughly 15,000 years ago. The footprints reveal the joint voyage of a little child and a wolf or dog as they traveled an astounding 150 feet into the cave. They were discovered close together. These prehistoric tracks have endured for millennia, leaving their story etched in hardened clay. The Chauvet Cave's eponymous discoverer, Jean-Marie Chauvet, first saw these tracks in 1994, and the tale they tell us takes us far down the cave. An eight to 10-year-old child entered the darkness here, escorted by a canine companion, either a wolf or a dog, against the backdrop of a Paleolithic world. A charcoal residue where stops were made to clean the torch is one of the few remaining clues that the child was using it. However, this discovery extends beyond a simple chronicle of human-animal companionship. Instead, it reinterprets how and when dogs came to be known as man's best friend. The conventional belief was that around the end of the last ice age, wolves started to associate with human settlements, leading to their eventual domestication. A distinct story is told, however, by recent archaeological discoveries and cutting-edge DNA analysis. New hypotheses contend that canines and humans evolved simultaneously and traveled a similar path. Ancient footprints discovered in the Chauvet Cave are proof that our species was once more closely connected than we are today. The idea of wolves being domesticated and bred with care has been replaced with one based on respect and mutual benefit in this new perspective. Early humans and wolves appeared to have cooperated because of similarities in social organization and hunting objectives, which were supported by an instinctive knowledge of one another's feelings and intentions. This newly discovered interpretation suggests that dogs were not only our friends, but also our lovers over 30,000 years ago, opening up a fascinating world of ramifications. The early wolf dogs may have carried a special symbolic value that distinguished them from other animals depicted in those paintings, as suggested by the absence of dog or wolf representations in the cave paintings. 9,000-year-old skeleton. Imagine your surprise if you discovered an antique skeleton and later learned that it belonged to a long-lost relative. An unusual event occurred in 1903 when the bones of a 9,000-year-old skeleton were discovered in a cave in Cheddar, England. Nobody had any idea that this incredible finding would subsequently reveal a truly astounding revelation. It would turn out that Adrian Target, a nearby history teacher, was this long-deceased person's direct descendant, spanning an incredible 300 generations. The skeleton bears the distinction of being the most distant confirmed relative in the world thanks to its exceptional genetic link. The genetic makeup of Adrian Target was shown to be similar to that of the Cheddar Man, the earliest complete skeleton ever recovered in Britain through thorough DNA analysis carried out along the maternal lineage. Surprisingly, Cheddar Man flourished before the development of agriculture in 7150 BC. Inquiries on the preservation and continuity of human genetic legacy are prompted by this genetic connection between a modern person and an old ancestor. This startling discovery was made while, once upon a time in the West, 
a television program that explored Somerset's archaeology was being produced. 20 residents with local ancestry underwent DNA testing as part of this project. The investigation, carried out by Oxford University's Institute of Molecular Medicine, entailed comparing genetic material taken from the pulp cavity of one of Cheddar Man's molar teeth with the DNA of the participants. The initial discovery of the skeleton in Cheddar Gorge's Gauss Cave is of utmost significance for the discovery of Paleolithic human remains in England. This historic finding disproves long-held beliefs about the spread of farming in Western Europe and has provided priceless new insights into the origins of human agriculture. In contrast to the widely held belief that farmers immigrated from Eastern Europe, the bones of the Cheddar Man provide an engrossing narrative of agricultural practices originating among the local people itself. This paradigm-shifting discovery necessitates a reconsideration of the complex connections and cultural exchanges that have impacted the development of human civilization in prehistoric eras. The extensive woodlands and a wide variety of species of his time would have been an integral part of Cheddar Man's life. He would have relied on hunting deer, rabbits, waterfowl, and perhaps fish, as well as scavenging for nuts, fruits, and edible roots as a hunter-gatherer. His group, which most likely consisted of extended families, was presumably offered a bountiful and secure environment by the Cheddar Gorge with its natural shelters, adjacent forest, and fresh spring. Physically, Cheddar Man would not appear out of place in our contemporary world. Because of his strong likeness to modern humans, he would be able to blend in while donning customized attire made of animal skins or pieces of leather sewed together. He lived after the time of woolly mammoths, but before agriculture's advent and the profound changes it brought about in human cultures. Remember that the most distinguishing anatomical trait of the earliest Homo sapiens was the size of their brains, which first appeared 300,000 years ago. There were craniums there as big as or bigger than ours. It is estimated that a completely contemporary human brain size didn't develop until about 100,000 years ago. Since 9,000 years in this perspective represent a relatively little period in evolutionary terms, Cheddar Man's look would easily fit with the present. Even the royal family's ancestry, which can be traced back to King Egbert, who ruled from 829 to 830 AD, is dwarfed by the amazing familial connection between Adrian Target and Cheddar Man. The genetic connection between Adrian Target and Cheddar Man, on the other hand, spans an astounding amount of time, revealing the persistent strands that connect us to our prehistoric roots.